Hey, what's going on guys? Rob from ClicksGeek. And before we get into the content of today's video, go ahead and subscribe to our channel. We drop new Google Ads training videos daily. If you like this video content, make sure you guys give us a thumbs up. Really appreciate that. And in today's video, we're going through a full beginning to end campaign build for Google Ads campaign for a lead generation campaign. And today we're going to do it in the plumbing niche. I'm going to show you what you're not going to see other places on YouTube. I'm going to show you how to build campaigns that are designed to actually pull phone calls, majority of phone calls. These are, and this is not a call only campaign. Okay, it's a regular search Google Ads campaign. I'm going to show you how we are able to build in any niche, doesn't matter what it is, campaigns that pull phone calls and contact form submissions. And we do that by only going after high intent buyer type keywords. All right, I'm going to show you how to find those keywords as well. Now this is gonna this video is gonna be a long one, guys. All right, but it's only because I'm not skipping through like most of the other guys are. I'm actually gonna show you step by step how to do everything. All right, so sit back and relax. It's gonna be probably you know 30, 40 minute video. All right, the, in this tutorial, the video segments we're gonna do is number one before you even build your your Google Ads campaign, we're gonna set up our, all of our conversion tracking, including how to track phone calls. Really, really important that you are tracking phone calls. If you're not, you're leaving money on the table. Then we're gonna go through the initial campaign build, which is the framework for the main Google Ads campaign. We're gonna go after that into finding how to find additional ad groups and how to find a high intent keywords. Then we're gonna go into finding negative keywords, which is another super important aspect of running your Google Ads campaign, because if you're not using negative keywords, you're gonna get crushed with irrelevant traffic that just doesn't convert and waste your money. And then we're going to add extensions and then I'm going to wrap it up on uh, final thoughts on just some tips that you're uh, going to really help you guys get this ramped up and get it moving fast. All right, so let's just not waste any more time. Let's dive right into it. You can see here we're logged into our Google Ads campaign. Now, first up, what on our list was conversion tracking. All right, so this is going to how you're going to set up conversion tracking. Now, I am assuming you already have a landing page built or your website's ready just to be used for this. So either, either one of those is fine, all right? If you're using landing page software or if you are you have a WordPress website or any kind of website where you can adjust the code because you're, you're going to have to add tracking tags to your website. So keep that in mind. So come into your Google Ads camp, your, uh, I'm sorry, your Google Ads account. You'll see here we're in ours. We're going to come up here, which you actually might not be able to see, but there's a little wrench icon and it says tools and settings. You're going to click that. It's going to do a drop down box. We're going to come over here to conversions. Now the first conversion we're going to set up is going to be our call extension conversion. All right now that is a Google ad extension, which we'll get into later building the campaign. But it's a Google ad extension where you can actually have a click the call button on mobile devices for, right on your ad. So it drives a lot of phone calls. It's really important you guys set this up. Okay. So you click here, phone, phone calls, phone call conversions. We're going to do calls from ads using call extensions or call only ads. Continue. We're going to name the extension, call extension lead. I know it's really clever. We're going to make sure it's one. Now here's something where we differ from a lot of other people. So this is call length. Basically Google's asking you how long do you want the call, the phone to ring before the pixel fires as counting as a lead, as a conversion. Now most people will be like, well, I want it like three minutes. I want to make sure it's a legit lead. I don't. I want it one second. Now, here's my logic on that. I want it one second because I want to know exactly which keywords are driving actions into into my in my campaign. Now, I mean, a lot of good calls can come from abandoned calls or someone hangs up or you get disconnected and it's not going to count as a conversion. I mean, you need to see which keywords are driving actions so you can optimize them. And that's really important. So that's why I do one second. I want to see which keywords are, are, are sending phone calls. All right. So I do one second. And again, guys, this is totally up to you. If you want to do, you know, 60 seconds or 120 seconds, or whatever you want to count as your conversion, that's fine. This is just how I do it. I want to see all the keywords. So I do that, create and continue. So now we have our call extension, call extension uh, lead set up right here. You can see it. Next, we're going to go to our form submissions. So you're going to come to website right here. Click that. It's going to ask you to come down here and just do a drop down. We'll do contact form 
submission lead. All right. I know another one that's really clever. Now you can assign a value for each lead you get. It's totally up to you guys. For this example, I'm just I'm not going to use one. Always do one because remember we're building a lead generation campaign, not in e-commerce or Shopify. All right, really big difference. This is not how. So if you guys are looking for e-commerce, this is not the video for you. This is straight up lead generation for any niche. Any niche doesn't matter what it is. All right, keep that in mind. We're only showing you how to build lead generation campaigns to pull leads. It doesn't matter what industry you're in. All right, so we choose one. Last attribution model we usually use is last click. There are a bunch here, and I have a, a video. I have videos on my channel about how each one works, but for the most for the most part, last click is it works fine for our lead generation stuff. Or time decay is another good one. But either way, last click is fine. Create and continue. All right, so now we're going to come here, install the tag ourselves. You can see here global site tag. Now this tag right here is going to go on every single page of your website, including the thank you page that shows after a contact form is submitted. All right. Now there's there's two different ways you can do this. You can you can have um, set it up the way we're doing it right now, which is a global site tag, then an event snippet code that goes on the thank you page with the global site tag. Or if you don't have a thank you page on your website, it just re, it just you know uh, submits the form and says thank you, and there's no redirect to a different landing page. You have to do a button click conversion, which is another video for another time, right? And that's how you would change that is down here. But for today, we're assuming you have a thank you page. And if you don't, you should create one and, and do it this way anyway, because this is just more accurate. So th that's what we're going to be doing today. So we take the global site tag. And remember, this goes on every single page of your website, including the thank you page. Or if your landing page is just your landing page and your thank you page, that's what we're doing here. So for this example, we have our, our uh, plumber landing page that we just created. And I'll walk you through this in a minute. But we use Instapage for our landing page building software. So that's what you're looking at right now is the back end of the, this landing page that we're using in the campaign. The back end of it and how we add all the codes and stuff. So we just come up here. You can go to HTML or JavaScript. doesn't really matter. You can see here we already have one in here, but we're going to delete that. So you're going to come up here into the head tag of your website or your landing page. And you're going to paste the global site tag. You're going to save it. Then you would hit update. All right, so we're good. Now make sure if you're on a WordPress website or something like that, you do this on every single page. And there are plugins that you can use for that. Just um, you can do a quick Google search and it can put tags on all of your pages in WordPress. All right, so that's our home page for the landing page we're using. Next, we're going into the back end of our thank you page, which is, you can see here, very generic. Thank you for filling out our form. One of our staff will reaching out shortly to discuss your plumbing project and set up your free estimate. So then we will come here. Let me delete this because it's old. So we would come here into HTML. We're going to paste our global site tag just like we did on the home page. Save. Now we're going to come back into our, our uh, conversion action we're setting up. Come down here. We're going to make sure it's on page load because we're sending it to a thank you page. We're going to copy the event snippet code. Go back over and going to come back into HTML in the head tag right underneath the global site tag that we just added. We're going to add the event snippet code. Save. Update. All right. We're ready to rock and roll. We are now able to track contact form submissions and call extensions, uh, phone calls that come from the, um, the campaign's call extension ads. All right. So we have our two conversion actions set up here call extension lead, which is our call extension one and contact form submission lead. Next, we're going to show you how to track phone calls that come from somebody lands on the actual website. All right, really important. So we want to go here calls to a phone number on your website. Continue. And we're going to say phone call from website. We're not going to assign a value again. You guys can if you want make sure it says one. Again, I'm going to set this for one second because I want to know which keywords are driving actions. We're going to hit create and continue. Last click attribution again, create and continue. We're going to install the tag ourselves. Remember, we already installed the global site tag on every single page of the website because we just set up the uh, contact form submission, so we don't need to do that. We'll come down here to phone snippet. All right, we're going to enter the phone number that we want Google to swap out on the landing page or your website. So if we come back into our website here, we have our 555, 
which is obviously our fake generic number, but whatever number you have on your landing page or your website at the top or all across the page, wherever it is, doesn't matter. We want to make sure that you're taking that number because Google's actually going to swap this number for each visitor that visits your website or your landing page and show a, a call tracking number, a local call tracking number, so we can track phone calls. So we'll put that right here. All right. And then we're going to hit create snippet. Install the phone snippet. So we're going to take this code, copy the snippet below, and paste it in the head tags of the page where your phone number appears, right after the global site tag. All right. So this goes on our landing page homepage. All right. And we're going to put that right below the global site tag. So if you have, a, if you're running traffic to multiple pages on your main website or something like that, you got to make sure that you have this snippet code on every single page where the phone number is, because or else Google is not going to swap it. And you're going to not be able to track all of your phone calls. And that's all we do, guys. Paste the code, hit confirm, update it live on the page. Come back in here, hit next. We're done. That's it. So now we are set up to track our ad extension calls, we're set up to track our contact form submissions, and we're set up to, to track people who land on the website and just pick up the phone and call or click the call or whatever. All right, so that is stage one. We are done here. Let me move this over here a little bit. There we go. All right, then we're gonna come over here. We're gonna hit the back tab, go back into our campaign. Adjust this a little bit. There we go. All right. So segment one, we're done. <coughs> Excuse me. Conversion tracking is set up. We are ready to rock and roll. We're ready to build this campaign and start getting some leads. All right. So next up, initial campaign build. Here we go. We're going to come on back over here. We're going to take our landing page URL just so we have it. And the tabs over here. Perfect. All right. We're going to come over here. We're in our Google Ads account now. We're going to come over here to campaigns. Click that. Hit the plus sign here. We're going to build a new campaign. And we're going to do it for leads. All right. So we want to do search. Then we're going to come down here. We want website visits. You're going to paste your website or your landing page or whatever where that's going to go. Hit continue. And we're going to name our campaign, which we're going to say Plumbing Lead Gen Philly, because we're going to be running in Philadelphia, which is where I am right outside of. Next up, come down the network so we can leave search partners on. Um, that That's always done really well for us. Display network, this is really important, guys. You've got to make sure you want to check this. You do not want your lead generation campaigns running on the display network when you're trying to just do a main search campaign. All right, you're going to get crushed if you leave this on. So make sure you turn that off. Come down here to more settings. We'll just check, make sure this is all good. All right, we want to set up an ad schedule. So we would do that here. Let's just say Monday to Friday. And we'll do 7 a.m. to it's military time, so 13 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 17 is 5. <clears throat> so 7 a.m. 5 p.m. is our ad schedule when our ads will run. We'll come down here, enter a location that we choose. So for this one, we're just going to do Philadelphia. If I can spell correctly, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Come down here, location options. So we're going to choose this. Now, I know this one's recommended. But we want to only show our ads to people in or regularly in our target locations. We don't want people in or who show interest in because that could potentially target people who are outside of your targeted locations but are searching for Philadelphia plumber. All right. We've seen it happen. So make sure you choose the right one here, which is people in. Next up, language, English. Audiences, stay away from that. We don't need that. Budget, you set your budget here. Now you can really, it depends what industry you're in. I always say as a rule of thumb for a lead generation campaign, if you really want to get competitive and start getting the phone calls in the next 24 hours from the, well, 12 to 24 hours from the campaign 
or even you know several minutes I've seen it happen from the campaign launch, you really need to have some runway each day and because the clicks get expensive. So I, I, I highly suggest if you're starting out lead gen, do at least $50 a day, Monday through Friday, or you know maybe not if you can't afford Monday through Friday, 50 a day, maybe just a couple days a week or whatever you can afford. But if you can't afford it, think about maybe just saving up for a little bit and then launching your campaign properly. In the long run, it's going to get you the results you need. All right, so we set that 50. Now keep in mind, guys, that's just my floor. You can really, you can do 25. You can do whatever you want. I set all of my lead gen campaigns start at 50, and they go as high as 2,000 to 3,000 a day. It depends. And we have clients who are 10,000. So it really, it really depends what you're comfortable spending. Just sorry, I just want to get that out there. All right. So this is just my personal preference. This is how I've seen the best results. Now, each new campaign we start, we use Google's auto bidding algorithm. It's totally up to you which conversion strategy you guys want to use. If you're not, if you're unsure about how all these conversion strategies work, go back to our Clicks Geek channel. And I have a playlist. I believe it's called, um, I think it's just called bidding strategies, where I walk through each one of these bidding strategies and how it works. So you'll understand them more. But for us, for, for a new campaign, we start every new campaign out with uh, maximized clicks. It's just Google's letting Google's algorithm do all the bidding for you, machine learning. So we're going to crush people who are trying to manual bid. And next, I always, always, guys, if you use maximize clicks, always set a maximum cost per click bid limit, or else Google can get crazy and bid out of control. So for the plumbing niche, we're going to set our bid limit at $34. So the highest we're willing to pay is $34 a click. And I mean, that might sound insane to you guys, but we want to give the we want to give the algorithm room to stretch its legs and really get bidding. That doesn't necessarily mean every click I'm paying $34. Some clicks I'm going to pay 5 bucks. Some clicks I'm going to pay 27 bucks. Some clicks will be 15 bucks. It's going to be all over the place. I'm just giving the algorithm room to stretch its legs and get going. But if you're not comfortable doing something like that, by all means start it lower, but it's going to be a slower climb for your campaign when it comes to lead generation. All right, so we got our bid strategy set. Show more settings. Just want to check in here. Account level, conversions. That's what we want. Ad rotation, optimize preferred best performing ads. That's correct. We want to do that. Next up, um, we're going to do all these in the later part of the video. So we're going to skip that for right now. The uh, ad extensions. So we hit save and continue. And we're going into our first ad group. So now you might be like, oh, I don't know what my first ad group should be. So whatever your main the campaign, the industry you're in, whatever you're built, you're running ads to, make that your first ad group. So for this one, obviously, we're going to do plumbers, right? Plumbers is going to be our first ad group. So we're going to see Google suggestions here. These are these two are really good. These are all good, but we want we want more. Um, a lot of these can be in their own ad group. So we're going to skip all these for now. And we're going to come up here because we're going to do our match types now. Now, if you don't know what match types are for keywords in Google Ads, again, go back to our Clicks Geek channel. I have all literally probably 15 videos on how to choose which match types to use. But my best advice when building your lead generation campaigns, start every new campaign with phrase, mat, phrase match and exact match only. Don't do anything else. So let me come up here, guys, and we're going to go to... A website called adwordswrapper.com so this is how we can wrap our keywords in their match types quickly so we're going to come back over we're going to grab our suggested keywords now you can see here when it comes to building your ad groups something you have to keep in mind an ad group is just a theme and then the keywords have to be part of that theme as well and the ads have to be part of that theme and the landing page has to be part of that theme it's all about relevancy so if we have a plumbers ad group we're only going to really have plumbers keywords in here. So I'm actually going to remove plumbing repair because that's its own ad group. So lo plumbers, local plumbers, plumbers near me. These are all great theme keywords for the ad group plumbers. So I'm going to copy these three, come back over to AdWords wrapper. I'm going to wrap them, wrap keywords, and we're going to come down here. We're going to take phrase and exact match. We're going to copy those, come back, drop them in our ad group. Perfect. Phrases, the uh, quotes. Brackets is exact match. Save and continue. 
and now it's going to ask us to create our first ad for the first ad group. You can see here's our URL, yourbusinessheres.co. So the first thing we're going to do, this ad group is just called plumbers, so it's only about the plumbers keywords. So we're just going to do, we're going to work the keyword in here into the display path, plumbers. We'll just leave it like that, actually. Now, if you don't know what to write for your ad copy, ad copy is kind of a, a science of its own. I'm going to go into it in the, later in the video on how we uh, how to write ad copy that pulls. But for now, just to get the campaign built, we're going to go through and just run through a generic one. Now, if you guys don't know what to write, an obvious way to do it is just go to like Bing Ads and search in your, in your niche and be like plumbers. And you can see what other comp competitors are doing. And then just make yours better. Don't copy what they're doing, please. Don't do that. But just you can kind of see what they're doing. So the bar is set on what you got to beat. And that's how you can get some great ideas. And just rewrite it better. All right. So our ad group is plumber. So our ads have to reflect that. Let's do need a plumber. Question mark. Our trucks are on standby. Call now for a phone estimate. Serving Philadelphia and surrounding areas. I'm going to explain why I'm writing this in a second, guys, the way I am. Serving Philadelphia and surrounding areas. If you have a plumbing emergency, call now. Our plumbing technicians can be on site today. Don't waste time. Call and my usually I put the business name here, um, but I don't think we actually have a business name for this <laughs> generic lead gen. Uh, so Homely is a generic logo that came to the page. Um, so we'll just say it's called Homely Plumbers. Call Homely Plumbers now. Or now. I don't want to use now because I just use that above today. All right, so that doesn't fit. So we'll do our plumbing text. All right. So... This first ad group, obviously, it's called plumbers, so the theme's got to be plumbers. So ad group, plumbers, keywords, plumbers, local plumbers, plumbers near me. In the ad, plumber, plumbers, we're good. Nice themed, it's all relevant, a nice straight line. Need a plumber, our trucks are on standby. Call now for a phone estimate. I can help you right now. Serving Philadelphia and surrounding areas. Hey, I serve your area. If you have a plumbing emergency, well, I do. That's why I'm looking for a plumber. Our plumbing text can be on site today. Hey, I can solve your problem right now. Don't waste time. Call Homely Plumbers today. See how I did that there? The message match is perfect. People searching plumbers. They need a plumber. Keywords are driving people who are only looking for plumbers. Need a plumber? Yes, I do. That's why I searched it. Our trucks are on standby. That's great. I need someone to come out. Okay, call now for a free estimate. You could work free into there, but I have to reword it. But call now for a phone estimate. Serving Philadelphia. Hey, I live in Philadelphia. If you have a plumbing emergency, call now. I do have a plumbing emergency. That's why I'm searching Google. See what we're doing here? We're just getting them nice and warmed up. So when they call, they're going to be a great lead because we're, we're qualifying them through the ad copy. We only want people who have all these problems, and we're just offering solutions. So every time you write an ad for a Google Ads campaign, it's really simple, guys. All you're doing, you have to figure out why someone's searching for you in the first place, what's their pain point, and then solve their problem. Obviously, someone's only going to search these keywords if they need a plumber. Now, where it gets really interesting is when you have the emergency keywords. So, emergency plumbers, emergency, local emergency plumbers, plumber, a plumbing emergency near me, right? Then you work in emergency into the ad copy and goes to a landing page that talks about, do you need a plumber right now? We can be over in 20 minutes. So, you're, you're solving someone's problem. That's all Google Ads is. 
People search Google to solve a problem. You present your company or your client's company as the solution to their problem. All right, so then we come back here. We're just going to go to uh, save and continue. We got our first ad group built and our campaign is good to go. So let's publish that. And we're inside our new campaign now, which I'm going to pause because I definitely don't want to send traffic to that generic page. <clears throat> let's go into ad groups. We got our number one ad group here. All right, so now we have built our campaign. The hard part's over, guys. We did it. We won. We got our locations. We got our ad schedule. We got our, um, our keywords. We got our first ad group. Now, obviously, we probably want to add more keywords into the plumbers ad group, but the plumbers is actually a pretty generic ad group, so I don't really want to go too in depth into that. So we're going to save that for something else here. So let's go back. All right, we're going to create a new ad group. Now, you might be thinking, well, how the hell am I supposed to find an ad groups? That's easy, all right? What you're going to do is going to come up here. Again, you don't think you'll be able to see it, but you're going to come up here to tools and settings, and you're going to click keyword planner. And it's going to pull you up to this page, which you're looking at right now. Discover new keywords. And we're going to type in the main theme of the Google Ads account we're building, which is plumbers. Get results. And Google's going to tell us what kind of ad groups and keywords you're going after. Now, something else to do, guys. Remember, our location for this campaign is Philadelphia. So we want to come up here. We want to choose Philadelphia. So I don't want to see search volumes for the entire country. Perfect. Look at that. These are great keywords. All right, so we got an ad group here, Emergency Plumber. We just found our first one. So you can. There's a couple ways you can do this. I'm not really gonna. You can build ad groups right in the keyword planner, but that's for another time, guys. And that might get confusing for newer people. So we're not gonna do that. You could create a Google Sheet. And just um, list out all these ad groups in it but I'm just gonna do it on the fly all right so we're I'm gonna walk you through how I decide which at which one of these is an ad group so emergency plumber that's its own ad group plumbing services that's its own ad group which will only have plumbing service type keywords in there plumbing companies its own ad group 24-hour plumber that's its own ad group so this would go in the services ad group this would go in the company ad group <clears throat> Affordable plumbing, that could be its own ad group. You know what? We should do a local ad group too. So local plumbers, that could be its own, local plumber, that could be its own ad group, and then all the local keywords go under that. Commercial plumbing, that's its own ad group. So you see what I'm doing here? Water heater repair, that's an ad group. That's a great one. So that's all we're doing. We're just going to come through, find a plumber. That's its own ad group. So we're just going to come through the keyword planner. We're going to find like the topic theme type keywords, and those are going to be our ad groups. And then you're just going to list them out, which I probably should have done that to show you guys, but <clears throat> you can list them out in a Google sheet or, you know, we can just do it in here for the sake of time. So emergency plumber is an ad group. Plumbing repair, we can use that as an ad group. I mean, literally, guys, you, for this, you can you can comb through this list and find 50 different ad groups. There's so much that you can find, but you just got to take the time to comb through it, which I'm obviously not going to do that while I got you guys on the hook here <clears throat> watching me build this because that would just be a ridiculously long video. All right, so you get it. That's how you're going to do it. You're going to build your ad group. So then we're going to say, all right, so our next ad group up, Actually, you know, wait, before we do the next ad group, what we're going to do, we're going to go back into the campaign. We're going to go back into the first ad group, plumbers. We're going to go into ads because we, we want to have more than one ad in the ad group. So we want to have one text ad and we want one what's called responsive search ad. All right. Now, what a responsive search ad is, you can see here, <clears throat> it's going to tell you. Your assets will be automatically combined to make sure they are seen to make sense individually or combined. Adding more assets increases your chances of better performance. So Google's algorithm is going to go ahead and decide which of the combination of all these headlines and all these descriptions gives you the best outcome when it comes to um, 
the best click-through rate, the best conversion rate. It's going to optimize for all of that stuff, taking a lot of the work out of it for you. So every ad group you build should have one text ad and one responsive search ad. Now you could take it a step further and do two text ads, one responsive search, or all responsive search. It's really up to you. I always do one in one. Okay. And if you're going to be doing this, guys, use all of the available headlines. Don't shortcut it. Okay. All the descriptions too. You want to flesh this out fully. Work all your keywords into the headlines. <clears throat> we want to make sure we have relevancy. So for this ad group, this is plumbers again. It's going to give us some suggestions here. Local plumber. We serve Philadelphia. Get a free quote today. I don't think it's going to let you put a phone number in there. I don't know why it's suggesting that. Free phone estimate. Same day plumbing services. Ignore my spelling, guys. Sorry about that. Same day plumbing services. We can fix any leak. Trucks are on standby. Oh, I'm not going to go through this whole thing, but you guys get it. And if you're still if you're still stumped and thinking, uh, oh, I don't know what's right here. Like I said, go into Bing and search your niche or your industry and see what your competitors are doing, and use their ideas to make your own ideas, and just do better than what they're doing, and you're going to be fine. Remember how to write compelling, pulling ad copy. We're solving problems, guys. Why are they searching these keywords in this ad group? Plumbers, local plumbers. Plumbers near me, you know, don't be afraid to ask questions. Located in Philadelphia, you, you got to just kind of take your time with this. You got to go through it and um, fl really flush it out. So that's for, that's for another time, though. Call now for plumbing help. Our plumbers are certified, licensed, and insured. You can fix any plumbing issue. Obviously, guys, I'm just breezing through this. You really want to put some thought, some thought into your responsive search heads. Really do the research and just you just remember what I said. Just message match. That's all you should care about. The ad group theme is plumbers. The keywords are plumbers, local plumbers, plumbers near me. The ad should reflect all of those keywords and why these people are searching. So all we're doing is solving the problems all the way through to the landing page. And the landing page should have all these types of language on it too. So the message match is perfect. That's how you're going to get the 40% conversion rates, 50% conversion rates, and you're going to pull phone calls fast. So take your time. I know I'm just trying to fill this out quickly, but I'm just trying to show you guys. And then you're going to save that. There we go. So we have our one responsive, one text. And now our uh, where the hell did the ad groups go? Oh man, it's because I paused it. Ugh, that's annoying. <clears throat> Let's get rid of that. It's not gonna let me do it. All right, all right. Looks like I'm gonna have to go into all the cam the pause stuff. Oh, oh, oh. You can see here we've done this a ton of times. <laughs> Plumbing Legion Philly. There we go. That's our campaign. And now we're on to creating more ad groups. So remember, we got all our ad group ideas. You got them all listed out. We're just gonna all we're gonna do is just come in here to your list or wherever you have them. We're gonna start taking them one at a time. Emergency plumber is the theme for ad group two. And how we're going to do that, this is a little shortcut that I like to do. We're just going to check that, edit, copy, edit, paste. It's going to do a little pop-up, done, paste. Google's going to go through and do its magic. Now this is just a shortcut so you're not walking through the new ad process every single time you make an ad group. That's a huge pain in the ass. 
This way, all you're doing is we're cloning the ad group, we're swapping in the new stuff, and you're tweaking all the ads to reflect the message match for the new ad group. It shaves off several minutes per ad group when you're building these out, especially if you're building the ad group that has like 50 ad groups or something like that, or 100 or, or more. Sorry guys, my internet's slow. Hang with me here. So what we're going to do next while we're waiting for that, we're going to go back into our keyword planner and we're going to put the theme of our new ad group into keyword planner. Emergency plumber. Look at that. Now something cool that you can do here. So we only want to find our emergency plumbing themed keywords. We're going to come down here and where is it? Keyword. We want to make sure every suggestion that's shown to us includes the word emergency. And then we're just going to load up this ad group with all of our great keywords. So we're going to open up another keyword wrapper for this ad group only. And we're going to start dropping our awesome keywords we find in there. So emergency plumber near me, obviously we want that. We also want emergency plumber. Let's take that down. Emergency plumbing service, we'll take that. So remember guys, we're only looking for high intense stuff. And I'm going to show you what I mean by that shortly. Local emergency plumber. These are all really good high intent keywords. These are buyer keywords. People are searching this because they have a problem. 24 hour emergency plumbing service. I'm going to take that. Best emergency plumber. Take that. All right, so you see what I'm doing here? Now let's go and look for keywords that I wouldn't want to put in this ad group. <clears throat> emergency plumber cost. I don't really like going after cost keywords. I feel like these people are shoppers and they're not really serious, like an urgent. I mean, it, I, I could be wrong, but I've had success just staying away from it. I don't want, if I'm not, if I'm unsure, I don't want to risk it. So I'm just going to stay away from them. I feel like they're shoppers and they're just trying to figure out the lowest cost stuff. Those necessarily aren't the greatest leads that come in. So we would stay away from that. Brooklyn. So that's obviously we don't serve Brooklyn. We serve Philadelphia. So why would I bid on that? San Antonio is the same. Cheap. I don't really go after any cheap type keywords. These are low intent keywords. Cheap. That's a very low intent keyword. And obviously a lot of these are not Philadelphia. So you would never go after half of these. Keep going down. What do we got here? Let's go down and see the most. Costs for emergency plumber. Drain cleaning emergency. That's a great one. That's its own ad group. EU, so that's wrong. Emergency plumber prices. I don't want price shoppers. These are all pretty, they're pretty decent intent wise. Minus the few we went over. Emergency plumbers limited. See, that's a very low intent. We don't even know what the, we don't even know what the intent is behind that. So that's something, that's, that's a perfect example of a low intent keyword that you don't want to bid on. Yeah, so for now, that's what you do. And you just keep going through and just keep, <clears throat> emergency plumber burst pipe that is and so it says zero search volume i don't believe that that's not totally accurate i would put this in its own ad group 100 percent. so yeah that's what you're gonna do you're just gonna comb through and you're gonna find the, the low intent stuff and you're not you're just gonna totally not give you that stuff so we got our key, let's just say we went through and we got all our keywords for the emergency ad group hit wrap keywords we're gonna come down phrase an exact match we're gonna copy them and we're going to come back. And remember, we cloned our ad group plumbers, so we're going to change that to emergency plumbers. And there we go, guys. That's it. Now we're cooking. We've got our second ad group. We're going to go in. We're going to remove all the first ad group's keywords. Remove. Confirm. Let Google do its thing. I don't know why it's being so slow today. Go. 
Come on, come on, come on. So we're going to let Google do its thing. They're going to remove all of these keywords that are left over from the first ad group. All we're going to do is paste in our new keywords. And then next up, we're going to go in and we're going to swap out our ads. And um, that's it. We're going to get rocking and rolling. Six keywords removed. All right, well, come on. All right, so we're going to add in our new keywords for the emergency ad group. Perfect. I'm going to go back into ads and extensions. We're going to go into our first ad. We're going to edit that. So need an emergency plumber. Emergency plumber, plumbers, plumbing, really do whatever. So I might want to even switch this up a little bit. I mean, you don't want to have the same copy in every single one. You definitely want to switch them up. If you have a plumbing emergency, we can help. Watch this. Call now for a free over the phone estimate. I like that. That's good. Our plumbing techs can be on site today. Don't waste time. Call Homely Plumbers today. Emergency plumber. Our trucks are on standby. Free phone estimate. Could change this up too. If you can go burst pipe or leaky drain. Actually, I don't think we can use a question mark into into uh, headlines. Burst pipe. Maybe drain leak call or call now or I don't know. You gotta play with it. Either way, you get my idea. If, if, go go if 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 the ad groups emergency plumbing, go and look up emergency plumbing. Go Google emergency plumbing situations, and Google will literally tell you all the all the plumbing issues that are considered an emergency, and you can just work them into your ad copy here. The pro tip, really easy to do, and it's going to help your message match, which is overall going to crush your campaigns and do really well for you. And uh, remember, guys, we're building campaigns that pull leads and contact forms at a much higher rate than the generic guys who just pull random stuff. Or I'm sorry, that uh, target random stuff and get a bunch of low intent traffic. So you do the same thing with the responsive search ad guys. You come in here, <clears throat> swap in emergency into everything, list out all of the emergency situations where people need a plumber, and you would hit save your ad. So obviously I'm not going to do that, but that's how you do it. And guys, this is how you expand your ad groups. And, and that's how you find your high intent keywords. Remember, we only want our keywords that are high intent. We don't want stuff that we're not sure what the hell they're searching for. We don't know the intent behind the search. All right, so if we got rid of emergency here. So these are all the keywords Google's telling us are relevant to emergency plumber. Sunday plumber, that is super low intent. Telling the emergencies, that's low intent. We don't really know what the motivation is behind this search. So that, that's what you guys got to filter out. And you, you'll, it might sound a little difficult now, but you'll get, you'll get it. It gets easier with time. Okay? So that's how you're going to do it. That's how we're going to build out our ad groups and uh, get everything rocking and rolling. So next up, we're going to do finding our negative keywords, which is super easy to do because we're just going to do what we're doing right now, which is in the keyword planner. You're going to type in the main theme of your campaign which for us in this example campaign we're building is plumber. You're going to hit get results and Google is going to show you keywords that Google thinks is very relevant to your keyword plumber. And you're going to, it's a joke how irrelevant some of these things are going to be. So we're going to scroll down to the bottom. We're going to come over here to the next page all the way down. And this is where we're going to start. All right. So RFG plumbing, that's probably another brand, so I'm going to use that as a negative. And again, you can use Google Sheets to build your negative list or 
whatever else you want to do. I'll, uh, for our sake of our video, I'm going to go back to Keyword Wrapper and just start doing that. And we'll, I'll show you what I mean by building out our list. So we got our first negative. We come back, York Plumbing and Heating, that's another brand. We don't want that. So we're going to add that to our negative list. I come up here, Home Advisor Plumber, we definitely don't want that. We don't want that at all. Home Advisor Plumber, and we want Home Advisor on there as well. If you don't understand how to how to do negative keywords, again, go to our ClickSkey channel, and I have a whole playlist on how to find and add negative keywords and um, how uh, how they should be how they should be added. So, Mr. Plumber, Hollywood Plumbing, you guys see what I'm doing here? We're just adding to this giant. I know it sucks and this is time consuming, but you got to do it. Trust me. It'll be worth it when your campaigns are flooding your business or your clients' businesses. So you got to just kind of keep going through that. I'm not going to do it. But then what you're going to do is you're going to copy your, once you've gone through and you've went through all of the pages and you have like a giant list of negative keywords. And remember, all we're doing is just finding irrelevant search terms that Google thinks are related to plumbing. We're building a giant list. We're going to copy that list once we have all of our negative keywords. We're going to go back into our campaign. And of course, it's probably not going to let me. I want to go find the campaign again now. Because it's paused, it's lumped in with everything else. <clears throat> Lead Gen Philly. So we're going to go. We have our negative keyword list that we just spent all that time building. We're going to go into keywords, negative keywords, hit the plus sign here, and we're just going to drop them. Save. So now we have a nice, big, healthy list of, well, you should, I don't, you you guys should, a nice, big, healthy list of negative keywords that are going to keep our campaign on the straight and narrow and only drive the most highest intent traffic and buyer keywords. All right, so that's it for finding negative keywords. Next up, add extensions. And we're going to cruise through that. So we'll start with um, the basics here. We want site link, call out structured snippet and call extension and also location extension if you can get it now i'm not going to really go to in depth into each one but i'm going to breeze through them again if you need to learn more about extensions go to our youtube channel and i have a ton of videos on creating and extensions and how they all work so the first one site link extension essentially all you're doing here in google you need a different url for each one of these now that's a new thing they're doing so you need multiple pages to use these so obviously if we have one landing page, we can't use one URL for all of these. It's meant to, it's meant to be to show, to show more links in your ad that take people around your website. So if you're running traffic to um, your own website, this is a great link to use. You can do like an about us page, reviews, um, it's, just bullet, it's pretty much bullet points. That's all you want to do here and bounce them around. Now if you're doing landing pages, you build your first landing page and then just clone it four times and put it on a different URL. So it could be, what's our URL here? Yourbusinesshere.co. So it could be yourbusinesshere.co, and this one, yourbusinesshere.co slash about. But I mean, they're all, go they're all going to the same page, pretty much. Yourbusinesshere.co slash reviews. And you can just write, you know, your review stuff here, and you want to fill out all of this too. So that's pretty much it. Then you would hit save, and that's how you do your site links. Next up, call out extension which is just more benefits slash bullet points you know call out text could be something like we serve philadelphia burst pipe or leaky drain question mark our texts are on standby call for a free quote it's just bullet points it's all you're gonna do here but seriously put some thought into them like i said before about writing ad copy you want to make sure your message match is perfect and that includes the ad extensions so the ad group theme keyword theme ad theme, landing page theme, and extension theme. They all got to be in line. Keep that in mind. So you would add those, and you would just hit save. Next up is structured snippet, which you can see here is what it would look like on your ad on a mobile phone, or we can do it on a desktop. It would be down here under your description. So that's what it looks like. And there's a lot of different things you can do here. Um, I usually do types or ser actually service catalog, and then I just list all the services. So if it's because you know if you're watching this video, you're doing lead gen for an industry, 
you already know what the services the client offers is. This is where you use that time to, to list out all the services. Or if you want to go the location route, you could do neighborhoods and list all the, if it's like a well-known area, you can list all the neighborhoods that they service. But your best bet's usually going with service catalog and listing out all their services. Cancel that. So that's how you would do that. And then we come to call extension. So this is really important, guys. The number that you use for the phone number here has to be on the website or landing page that you're sending the uh, traffic to. Google's going to crawl it, and if you don't, if the number's not on there, they're going to disapprove this. So you would put your, you paste your number in here, make sure your call reporting's, reporting's turned on, and then this is where we're going to come into play our call extension conversion action that we set up in the beginning of this video. Remember, come down here, you're going to choose that call extension lead. All right. Then you're going to hit save, and then we set up our call extension. And those are the main ones you should be doing. There's a few other ones. Lead form, to stay away from for now. Location extension, that's something that you should um, add, but you have to have a Google My Business account to use that. So if you do have a Google My Business account, you should definitely connect that to your AdWords account so you can use the location of your business and um, get that set up. And then you can add prices, like price extension, Promotion extension app, you're not really going to have anything to do with for lead gen. The affiliate, you probably won't either. And that's pretty much it, guys. So my final thoughts on building the Google Ads campaign is designed to pull phone calls fast. you got to have the correct bidding strategy, which I told you is to start out, maximize clicks with a high bid limit cap. And now, something I probably should have went over, actually, was how to decide to set the bid limit cap. And how you would do that, I'll show you really quickly. Come into your keyword planner again, and we'll type in plumber, All right, get results. So we have our plumber keywords, and I'm on the last page still, Let me get back to the front. Okay, so Google's telling me top of page bid on the low range for the keyword plumber is 1148. Top of the page bid on the high range, on top of the page bid means the top four spots on Google's first page of the search results, which is where you want to be, okay? The high, the high bid is $48, so you can see why I set mine so high, because look at these prices. Google's saying, hey man, to be on the top, the high range of the top of the page, you've got to be bidding 48 bucks. So you got to set your bid limit cap based on your campaign theme. That's how I do it, at least. You can do, I mean, you could start it out lower if you want. But we got, you know, we do white label PPC for the most part, and a lot of we do a lot of retail too. But our white label stuff, like our clients need leads fast, and to get them fast, you gotta you gotta pay. So we we start out higher, and then we whittle it down over time. But that's how you're gonna decide what to set your bid limit cap at when you're using maximize clicks. Come into the keyword planner, type in your main theme for the keyword. All right, tell Google. All right, so then all my ad groups, I don't want you guys to bid more than forty-six dollars. And remember, they're not. The algorithm is not going to bid forty-six dollars. That's just you're telling it it can't bid over that. A lot of these keywords is going to bid seventeen, twelve, dollar eighty-seven, six fifty-seven. I mean, it's going to four four dollars. <coughs> well, if, you know, if you're going after that stuff, but it's going to go at the stuff that we're bidding on is what's going to it's going to be bidding price-wise. Kitchen sink plumbing. If that was an ad group for kitchen sink plumbing, you know, you're gonna pay four dollars and eighty-five cents on the low end and thirty-two on the high end. Thirty-two is still not forty-eight. See what I'm doing here? So that's that's how they're gonna decide. But that's just that's how you're gonna pick your uh your your max bid cap for your maximized clicks convert um bidding strategy. All right. Final thoughts on the campaign build. You know, if you guys have any questions, obviously drop them in the comment section below this video. Um it's all about relevancy, guys. Really, that's the best advice I can give you is if you just set the campaign up the way I just showed you and walked you through, step by step, build out your ad groups. Don't just build three ad groups. Build out 15, 20, 30, whatever. The more you build, the more traffic you're going to get, the more leads you're going to get. All right? Relevancy and message match is the most important thing I can, I can lay on you guys when it comes to building Google Ads campaigns. The message match is huge. All right? Remember, once again, I'll go through one more time. Ad group, plumbers, let's do ad group, emergency plumbers, keywords, all, all about emergency plumbing, keywords, ads, all about emergency plumbing, landing page or website page where it goes, all about emergency plumbing, okay, perfect message match, you're just solving the problem that someone's searching Google for, that's really it guys, 
And, um, you know, I, I hope this video has helped. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. If you guys, like I said before, if you guys have any questions, drop them in the comments below. Give this video a like if you can. And uh, check out the description. I put some, some pretty cool stuff in there for you guys, including a free three-step video course that I created about optimizing your Google Ads campaigns once you have running to keep them producing leads and running smooth. It's actually called um, Google Ads Optimization Combat Tactics. So check that out. It's free. And I'll catch you guys in the next video.